Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we have a rather nice camera uh, that's kept in this black case. You can see it's an Olympus pen, not a digital pen. This is a, a proper pen. It's a film pen and it comes in this rather handy little case. And there's a reason for keeping it in such a case. And that is because this camera is powered by selenium cells. These have a limited life span if they're exposed to light. So when you're not using it, keep it uh, in the dark. These are the photo cells around the outside of the lens. This is the lens in the middle. The advantage of this layout is that um, if you put filters on, then the exposure compensation is automatic. All right, this is an Olympus Pen EE. This dates from 1961. And with the rising price of film, this is... Uh, Maybe one of the ways to tackle the rising cost of film because this is a half frame camera. So this will give you 72 exposures on a 36 exposure film. As you can see, the frame counter goes up to 72. Uh, it's also highlighted at 40, which is for a normal 20 exposure, 35 millimeter film. So the lens on this is a 28, well, 2.8 centimeters, a 28 millimeter f3.5. Because it's half frame, there's a bit of a crop factor effect going on here. So it's not really a 28 millimeter lens. It actually has a field of view nearer to a 40 millimeter lens, which is still quite a nice focal length, to be honest, um, because it's a half frame camera. Really nice looking camera. It's a beautiful camera yet again. It really is a point and shoot camera. It's fixed focus and it's automatic. So it really is just take it out, point it and shoot it kind of camera. It does have a flash connection here on the front. And as you can see on the top of the lens, the only real settings that we have, this is going to focus today, is the ASA. So there you can see that will adjust the aperture. That's more for flash. So you've got the apertures across here. And then you have the ASA, and the maximum is 200. And 160, 100. Remember, the films that we take for granted nowadays, back in the day, weren't really available. Most of the films were 100 ASA or lower. Hence the, the lack of high-speed uh, ASA settings. On the top, we have our frame counter. This is where you wind on, it's just a, a windy lever. The shutter release. It's too dark for it to take pictures. Set that right at the top. And uh, this is where you would rewind the film. When you finish taking your 72 exposures or however many it is that you want to take. This is the viewfinder. It's not a range finder, so there's no patch in the middle. You'll notice that it's always in sort of portrait orientation. This is the way you'd normally hold a camera um, to be in the landscape mode. But with this camera, that is actually landscape mode. And that is actually portrait mode because it's a half frame camera. On the bottom here, we have a push in to rewind, pretty standard on cameras. We have a tripod mount and we have a lock for the removable back. There's no batteries because, as I've said, it runs off the selenium cells. This is actually the second version of this. There's another version which has got a more plain leather covering that has a fixed shutter speed of a 60th. This one has two shutter speeds, a 30th and a 250th. This is like the Mark II version of this camera. Here you can see the pressure plate. You can see the way that it's orientated. And here you can actually see the back of the camera. So we have a slotted take-up spool and a sprocket drive top and bottom. And here you can see, I'll zoom in a bit. Here you can see the actual aperture for taking the picture. This is the half frame in the vertical. As I said, if you want to do landscapes, you've got to turn the camera the opposite way. And this is where your film will go onto this side. So a very simple camera. I pointed at the light, maybe it will work. There we go. Very quiet. There you 
here. Obviously, when you're buying one of these, you really want to make sure that it's been kept in the dark um, because once these cells stop working, which eventually they will do, the camera won't function at all. It'll just be an ornament. Okay. To load the camera with film, we we'll go back to our Kodak Gold. And this is a 35mm film cassette. Pop that in this side and feed it across like so. It feeds into these sprockets on this side, wired it on. You can see here it's taken it up, wired it on, make sure the sprockets are lined up. You can see that it's grabbed the film through on that side and placed the back on. There's no foam as well. There's a little bit of foam in the bottom of this one. That might need replacing, whether you can see that or not. The whole back just slides on. This is in the era before the uh, the opening backs on the hinge. Lock it down like so. As you know, I always advise just taking up the slack so that you know that the film is being advanced and going through the camera. And then you can reset the frame counter. Zoom back out again. Sorry, not the camera now. There we go. So the frame counter is... Let me just turn this around and it matches up with the zero. So let's wind on. I'll take a shot. And now it's moved on to the one, so that's good. So it's an additive frame counter, not a subtractive one. I don't know what that little sticker there is for. It'll probably be an original sticker, a bit like the past one at the top. And there's the frame counter. And that's about it. That's all there is to it. Very simple camera. You have no real choice over apertures. I suppose you could set the apertures manually, but that would be for flash. And I think then it sets the sync speed to uh, a 30th on this particular camera it only has a two shutter speed like i say a 30th and a 250th the earlier version with just a plain leather finish on it has a flash as, as a one shutter speed of a 60th beautiful looking camera is lovely and small the name pen incidentally comes because they figured that it was small enough that you could carry it just like a pen you could slip it in your pocket and just carry it about with you but yeah, a really, really beautiful little camera, I think. So when you've taken all your pictures and you want to unload the camera, you push in on this little button on the bottom. It stays in on this camera, which it should do on most of them. Then you fold, fold out this handle, if you can get to it. And then you can rewind the film. There we go. Oop. Very small, I've got big sausage fingers. I think that's off, you can feel it coming off of the uh, take up spool. Remove the back and just take your film out. Ready for the next one. But yeah, beautiful little camera. But like I say, if the cells are worn out, it's just going to be an ornament. It is quite a beautiful ornament, but this one seems to be a worker. So, another video where I have some fun and put some film through it. That's a black and white, I think, just to see how it comes out. But yeah, remember, selenium cells always keep them in the dark when you're not using them. This is ideal because it's got the original case with it as well. So, there we are, folks. That's the camera for today the Olympus Pen EE, dating from 1961. That's a half frame camera, so you get twice as many pictures on the one roll. Obviously, the downside is that the negative is only half the size, but if you're only going to make small prints, I don't see that as being much of an issue. Interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Comments, questions, queries down below. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like and all the usual YouTube stuff. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.